Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back, of course, Lee Harris from ATPI Travel. How are you, Lee? Yeah, I'm very good. Thank you. Had a good week. So, yeah, ready to go for another one. Wonderful. Yeah, we're heading into springtime now. And of course, we're taking a look at the Mediterranean season just around the corner. So we're going to be seeing a lot of movement quite shortly, I'm sure. Yeah, there's going to be a lot in there. There's quite a few yachts still in the Caribbean. They'll be heading this. I was going to say heading this way. They're not heading my way. They're going to be heading your way, aren't they? To uh, to the Med very soon. So yeah, the next sort of few weeks or whatever, there's going to be quite a migration, I'd say. Yeah, they're probably thinking about it now, the next couple of months for sure. Flights for crew and are they changing crew, et cetera. So more, more important than ever are your cruise travel updates. So definitely stay tuned. So this week, what is going on with United Airlines and Boeing? Yeah, so we talked about this last week. So further to last week's story with regards to the grounding of the Boeing MAX 9 jets, uh, we do have a significant update. United Airlines returned its Boeing 737 sorry, MAX 9's fleet to service on Saturday, January 27th. That was after receiving the final green light from the F. The three-week-long grounding was caused by a mid-air blowout accident on Alaska flight 1282 on January 5th, which prompted questions about the airworthiness of the Boeing jet. United Airlines is the biggest operator of this type worldwide, boasting a fleet of 79, with 31 more to be delivered. The grounding has caused thousands of flights to be cancelled across United Airlines' network, affecting hundreds of thousands of travellers. Now, since the incident, inspections have been conducted on all affected 737s, and the FAA ordered 171 MAX 9s with door plugs to be grounded and inspected for possible loose bolts. More loose bolts and issues have been reported by airlines, including United, whose technical staff found loose bolts on the door installation of at least five other jets. Now, the FAA has since granted approval for the aircraft's return to service. To return a Boeing 737 aircraft to service, though, uh, United Airlines must complete specific FAA-ordered inspection and maintenance processes. Per the FAA, the inspection process includes checking bolts, guide tracks, and fittings of the affected area, inspecting dozens of components of the door plugs, and retorking fasteners. Now, thankfully, that has all been done. United and the FAA have agreed that all procedures are now been done, put in place, and they're all ready to fly once again. Gosh, I hope nobody ever checks me for loose bolts because I'll be put out of service permanently. <laughs> it's just when you wake up in the morning, you rattle, don't you? I, I rattle 24 hours a day now, so <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> you border control warning. Yeah, Frontex, who are the EU's border control agency responsible for the European Travel Information and Authorization System, which is ETA short, has warned there are already 60 unofficial Atias websites. Now, ATIAS is the new visa waiver program for non-EU travellers, which is due to come into force in mid-2025. When live, customers will need to apply for an ATIAS ahead of travel via the official website. That's the official website is www.europa.eu forward slash ATIAS. Now, the ATIAS regulation does allow commercial intermediaries to apply for the travel authorization on behalf of others. However, as the application process rule will cry Sorry, it will require travelers to submit details of their passport details, credit card number, and other personal data. Frontex has warned it is important to ensure that such sensitive information is not misused. It also added once the TIAS is launched, the commercial intermediaries will have to use the official TIAS website anyway. That is the only official channel uh, to apply for the travel authorization on behalf of their clients. Now, applying on the official website will cost seven euros. And if you're obviously applying through an intermediary, they're going to charge you extra on top. So anybody who is looking to do it, once it does come live, which is next year, make sure you know who you are booking it through. If you're not doing it on the site and you are doing it for an intermediary, make sure you do your homework. In today's day and age when AI is so relevant and there is so much cybercrime, that is the new war, isn't it? Worldwide war is... Cybercrime. I would not be giving my details to anybody but somebody that I completely 1,000 million per trillion percent trusted as far as thinking. Yeah, especially when you're talking about having to upload a passport, credit card, you're just asking for trouble. You're literally giving them your life. And, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be self explanatory this website. I and mean, if it's anything like applying for the US Esther or the New Zealand, it's a Royal Australia one, they're very straightforward and simple. So 
they, they shouldn't really be a need to be going through any of the intermediary. It is biting now. Watching cybersecurity, the FBI was broken into. Oh, what a kind of so when you consider the top yeah. crime fighting agency in the US of A is managing to have a, a cybersecurity risk or a cybersecurity break. What's the rest of it? Yeah, going to do? Uh, United Airlines European Network. Yeah, so United have shared on its social media channels that from May the 23rd, it is launching a new non-stop flight from Chicago International Airport to Athens International Airport. The new seasonal route will be operated by a Boeing 787 with a capacity for 243 passengers in a free cabin configuration. The flights will operate all the way through until August the 12th. Uh, now, heading a route from Chicago will mean United will have free Athens routes as the carrier also operates flights from Newark in New York and from Dulles International Airport. Uh, Neve of these routes operates year round. They do operate from March to December. Now, with the free offerings, obviously, this is great news for the US based crew working the mid season this year. And there's news out of KLM. Yes, there is. Yeah. So, previous announced measures to cut down on nighttime flights out of Amsterdam Schiphol International Airport have come to play this summer, uh, forcing the Netherlands national airline, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, to change for intercontinental arrivals. Now, the situation regarding the Dutch government's environmental initiatives has extensively involved considerations of Amsterdam Schiphol. Initially, the plans had involved broader cuts that saw a significant reduction to the KLM operation at the airport, also affecting other. The government, though, later backtracked, announcing only slight cuts that would impact a select number of night flights. And this has now been confirmed. So the routes affected by the changes include KLM services that arrive at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport between midnight and 6 a.m. local time. The services that are going to be affected are from Lagos, Nigeria, Accra, Ghana, Atlanta, the United States, and from Suriname. Thankfully, not too many that should impact on the crew traveling for the mid-season. Now, changes will be effective from around the start of the aviation summer, which is March the 30th. It is also worth knowing that this does not mean there will be no overnight flights at Amsterdam Airport. Transavia will continue offering nighttime arrivals and departures, while cargo operations will remain unchanged. But as usual, that will have a knock-on effect on travel the world over because of connecting flights, etc. So... Exactly right. Yep, there will be knock-on effects, so just be careful when you're booking after my supply your pants, there could be slight issues. I hate to say it, I'm one of these people that likes to book my own flights because I'm cheap. But the problem is that if you do that and you've got three flights in a row, and I of the same, you book six months in advance, for example, and all of a sudden something like that happens, and you've got no recourse. Exactly right. Yeah. And if it's and if it's not a one free ticket and it's three separate tickets, then the other airlines are not going to worry about whether your Calam flight has been delayed or cancelled or rebooked or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, you can book yourselves. I wouldn't recommend it, to be honest. And I know people think it's cheaper, but it's not. It really isn't. And that's not me just saying that as a, as a travel agent. I had a person this past weekend who had asked me for some flights. He came back and said he could get them cheaper somewhere else. He went and done it and then came back to me literally hours late and that they've changed his flights and they don't connect. And he's got this problem and all that problem. Could I sort it for him? Then the, the, the simple answer is I can't fix something if he's booked it on a website. There's nothing I can do. And lo and behold, I, he had to write off quite a bit of money. And that was yesterday that we spoke and had to, thankfully, he's rebooked through me, which is good for me. But also, he also knows now that if he's got any issues, he's got somebody he can contact 24-7. He'll sort it out for him. Yeah, I don't fly very often. But when we were talking yeah. about the marine industry and yachting, Best flights are damn important because you're either getting home on a vacation or you are going to a new gig, whatever. But uh, there's dates. Those dates are extremely important and you can't afford to miss them. And besides that, somebody else is usually paying for that. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And the money, if there's a missed flight or a delay or a cancellation and you can't speak to the person because during COVID, we talked about a lot when we were doing the updates thing that you could be spending two, three hours on the phone trying to get through to an airline. It's, it's not changed. It's still the same. COVID's gone. It's been and gone. But the wait times for the airlines are just as long now as they've always been. They've not really come down to any great significance. Like you say, if you're talking about a crew member who's got to get to a yacht because it's going on charter the next morning and he flies to late and he's trying to speak to an airline for three hours, it could cost thousands of pounds. And it's not only that. I mean, I remember, I think this was six or seven years ago now, my then 18-year-old daughter was traveling back to Canada from 
Bahama and we booked her flight. Now, there was a terror alert in Germany. And so the airport got shut down. And here's this 18-year-old who hasn't traveled across the planet on her own before, stranded in an airport, missing all of her following flights in Germany, which had another three flights getting her back to Canada. That's chaos. What do you do in that situation? It's, it's really important to protect yourself because we do live in a day and age where things like transportation are targeted, whether it be a terrorism attack or whether it be air flight control is hacked. Uh, I, there's so many things that can happen. Y- you got to be covered. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, there is, there, there, there is so many things. And I think people, you become a little bit blase about the whole thing. COVID's gone, so if everything's okay, you can go back online. But like you say, there's so many other things going on. Look at the world and the war and all the rest of it that's going on. Travel, travel's never easy. It never is easy. There's always things that, that can happen that can crop up, that can pop up, that you could never possibly imagine or, or counter for. Having somebody who's there that you can contact whenever, wherever, who, who's built up rapports and built up relationships with airlines or, or hotels or car hires or people like that, it's worth its weight of gold. And if it costs, and saying if it does cost you an extra 50 pounds or 50 euros or whatever, I'm telling you now, that's probably going to be the best 50 pounds or 50 euros you've ever spent if anything does happen to go wrong. Honestly, if anything's going to happen and your name is Rhea, it's going to happen. <laughs> if, I'll tell you what, if anybody is traveling, what they should do is ask for the, the passenger manifest. And if they see your name on there, they should rebook immediately because guaranteed it will go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm going to put this book in the world. This, I don't know. I'm taking it all for the world. You're welcome, everyone out there. You're welcome. <laughs> it's a good social service you're doing. Yeah. yeah. I tell you. Anyways, in-flight Wi-Fi, more and more airlines are coming on board with that, which is great news for a lot of people, especially if you're an Instagrammer. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, the Lufthansa Group of Airlines are rolling out Wi-Fi to more aircraft across the short to mid haul fleet. That's including the Airbus A220. Uh, that's obviously good news for passengers because the airlines will also be offering free in-flight messaging on internet-equipped flights immediately. Uh, now, it's not just the availability of onboard internet being expanded, but also the cost of accessing the service. From now on, anybody with a Miles and More account or a Lufthansa Group Travel ID can use free messaging services when flying on board an aircraft with connectivity installed. There is no cost to creating one of these accounts, which means that such access is effectively free. Nice. Gosh, that's a shocker, isn't it? Yeah, it's often free, eh? Who would happen very it? often. It never happens anymore. And this week, we've got a crew question. Yeah, we did. We received a question in from David, who is currently working in Australia, uh, and he's due to return to the UK at the end of February. Now, David wants to know what the best seats would be for his long haul flights from Australia to Europe. Obviously, David, th- this question comes a lot with personal preference. Um, however, there are a few options available to you to ma- uh, make the journey just that little bit more comfier. Firstly, what I would suggest is that you pick seats in, adv- uh, in advance. Safe bets include the emergency exit row, Make sure it's reclining. They're probably going to cost you a few quid if you want those. And the cabin's first row, which is they called the bulkhead on busy flights, both usually offer endless leg room, which is a massive bonus. Now, if your flight looks empty, try picking an empty row at the back of the plane. Since airlines assign seats from the front, a place in the back could give you a whole row to stretch out in. So keep an eye on the seat map during a 72 hours before flying and ask at the airport. Now, I hope that info helps, David, and let us know how you get them. I don't know how people do it. The last time I flew, I think it was five years ago, but, and I was economy because that's who I am. But I mean, your knees, it was so hard. And I'm only like five, my kids think I'm getting shorter. So I think maybe I'm five, seven now, five, six. But, and that's like below average height for most of the European population anyways. But my, my knees were like, it was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. So I can't imagine if you're like anything over five, nine or, or six foot. Yeah. And I think that the, I think the average pitch now is around about 29 inches, which isn't a lot at all. Is it not really when you're talking about a long haul slide? If you're, uh, as David is flying from Australia back to the UK, you're, you're looking at probably, if you went via the US, you're looking at two 12 hour flights. 
if he's going via Asia, you're probably looking at a 16 hour flight and then an eight hour flight or, or whatever. So either way, he's going to have a very long flight with not a lot of pitching economy. So I would, if he can get emergency XRI seats, then do it because you will get that added extra comfort. But if not, then hopefully the information we've given will definitely help him. One added tip too is that because everything is so confined, if you carry a tiny little travel size of underarm deodorant, because I've been stuck on a long haul <laughs> flight next to somebody yeah. who possibly showered in the last century and being that <laughs> close for that long with somebody who really made you want to be sitting in the facilities rather than where you were. It's nice to have those little travel sizes because then you can spray yourself and maybe they'll get the hint. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you can even get that, that the aftershave now where you can just rub on your finger and, 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 and pow on it. It's like a, it's like a gel type thing, isn't it? Which is quite handy for men. I don't, I'm, I'm sure they do them for women as well. Um, yeah, no, so it yeah, doesn't give can, quite the same hint, does it? If you whip one, then a spray bottle out, you go, then it's obvious to them that something's yeah. going wrong, right? If you just dab yeah. them. Yeah, if you want to make it completely obvious to them, then yeah, oh. start dousing them. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> no, I am sorry. Just start, just ask them to lift. Just ask them to lift the little spray underneath. Oh, just fun. keep an eye on them. And if they actually want to stretch or something, take your opportunity, right? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You know what? I'm surprised I've ever made it an entire flight without getting kicked off midway. Yeah, there's still a chance, I'm sure. I know. They didn't boot me right out of the plane. No parachute or nothing. They, they wouldn't even bother landing. There goes Rhea. Yeah. yeah. Lee, I want to say once again, it's been an absolute pleasure and I really enjoy our weekly updates and chats. Yeah, no, me too. Yeah, it's been great fun. So yeah, good one this week and look forward to next week's. And I have to mention, as we have spoken about today, crew questions, please do send in any questions that you may have if they need to be answered immediately. Lee will, of course, do, or we can address them on the next show. All of Lee's information is going to be placed below this interview when it airs. You've been watching another edition of Crew Travel right here on Yachting International Radio with Lee Harris of ATPI Travel. My name is Rhea. I have been your host. We'll see you again next week.